you're going to create a three-page wireframe for a website. I'm going to show you how to get started. I want you to do something similar but not identical to what I do. Make sure that you have the full educational version which is free to upgrade. The email address for you that you need is on the Canvas assignment page. You're going to use a blank wireframe. To make sure to get that you need to go into categories and select wireframes and then choose blank wireframe. Before I get started I like to do a couple of adjustments. I like to show the rulers and I like to change my measurement from inches to pixels. And then I'm going to draw the basic browser window which I'll make larger than my and I click and I drag this in and I'll make it a bit larger than my web page design should be because typically you'll see some surrounding area of the browser in a web page. And then I'm going to start putting in elements. So normally my first element will be a container. And I may have one or multiple containers, but they're usually set to a width of either 960 or 1060. And either one's acceptable. And so I start with a width of 960 or 1060 pixels and then I'll typically take it to a height of between 600 and 800 pixels just depending on my goals for the page somewhere in there okay so this represents what would typically be my container and then there's a few common elements that I'm going to put in every page will have a masthead and creating a wireframe is like creating a blueprint for a house. You're not choosing if your cabinets are cherry or oak, but you are choosing where they're going to be. So we don't use colors, we don't put in real images. We put in image placeholders. So I'm going to put in, and I'll adjust the fonts before I even start typing. And so I'll put in my site title. If you were doing this for a real wireframe, you would put in the actual title of your website, whatever would appear in the masthead. And then I might have a logo. Images are represented by an X because we're looking for image size and placement at this point. We don't want to be distracted by the actual image. And then I could put in all sorts of different navigation. I could put in buttons, I could put in a button bar, and here I could change and have these say the actual page name, so I'd say page one, except I would actually have real navigation if this was for a website. So let's say I was doing a product website, I might have women's shoes, men's shoes, something like that. The navigation would typically be a real representation of the other pages. And then I would typically have a footer on every page. And that is going to potentially have a sitemap and copyright information. Sitemaps at the foot of the page are usually done with a link list like that and you might have copyright information. So this would be the common elements on every page. Once I have those done, I call this the master page because I'll use it to create new pages. And I'm going to right click on the title and I'm going to choose convert to master because this will be on every page and then I'm going to do a new page from master. And you'll end up doing that three times, one for each page. So you should end up with a home page and two inside pages. And you'll design it the way you think that that would look. So we'll say for my home page I might want to do an image 
and often this image will have three or four image options that scroll through. Or if you didn't want to do an image on the front page, it's very common to have a video. You can represent that as well. And you could have it in front and center, or you could have it floating to the left. And then I'm going to put in a text input box, because you want to have text on your page, not just a video, because text is seen by the search engines. And then I can set my font sizes for this as well. Choose a good sans serif, easy to read font, and I can go and get to where I'm getting the flashing cursor, and I'm going to insert Lorem Ipsum. Now I would not center align that text. That text would be left aligned towards the top. And so that would give you an idea of what the page would look like. I would probably also have an H2 element. Now you don't get that specific here, but you would have a text probably a video title. And you can use your arrow keys to move things around. So that would give me a wireframe for the first page. You can see that that is really rapid. Now, often I'm asked, do I actually do this when I create web pages? And the answer is, if I'm creating them for another person, I have to do that because they can't read my mind. You either have to do a wireframe or you have to do a mock-up in Photoshop, and wireframes are the fastest way to do it. If I'm sitting with somebody, I may just sketch this on a piece of paper. But to get paid to make sure that I'm doing what they want, I want to get this layout done first, and then I would present them with fonts and colors and graphics, and I'd have them sign off and pay me for each portion of the website that I did. But I would never want to start coding if I didn't have an OK from my client as to the actual design. So after this, I would either go into Photoshop or I would do rapid application development using a framework like Bootstrap, Skeleton, or something like that. And the nice thing, if, you, if you're fairly confident going directly to a, a prototype using a framework, you can take that right into a complete site very quickly. But I can work from either Photoshop or that. It doesn't really matter to me. The key thing is that your wireframe is a way of showing your client what things are going to look like. So you'll end up with three pages, and you should name all three pages, having something meaningful. This would be my home page. And then you're going to share the document with me. And I want you to, I'm just going to call it Project Wireframe. And I want to publish. And I want it as a PDF. I'll generate the link. And then I'm going to download it. And that's exactly how I want you to share it with me. I want you to download it. And if you have, it'll ignore the master page, but it'll put all the three other pages in here. And they should have different layout, maybe text, maybe images. But you'll create the PDF, and that's what you're going to hand in.